truth had gone, truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. Proof gone. Hmm. Truth gone. Maybe those two words. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Truth had gone. Truth had gone. Truth had gone. If I say it aloud, does that? What does that sound like? Truth had gone. Truth had gone. Truth had gone. Switching the sentence around. Reading them backwards gets us what? I don't think backwards gets us anything because yeah that doesn't seem like words this is tricky yeah reading it aloud if it's just if it's something that sounds like okay switching the sentence around What else could gone and truth mean? Huh. I wonder if there's another piece of information that we were given at some point that I just have no idea. Huh. Want me to just pick one for now? Maybe, ah, maybe I, I am stuck. I am stuck. Dumped. <sighs> it's about to make an un Yeah, let me see. Where's where's our menu? There's a menu. Uh, let me just drop a save here. There we go. All right, let's pick one. Reading it aloud hasn't really done anything for me. Switching the sentence around, I don't see how that helps. What else could gone or truth? I think this is our most... And reading them backwards doesn't seem to help us either. Mm. Let's try this one. Okay. What else could gone and truth mean? Truth, of course, means something that's correct. Something that's fact. In other words, something that is right. Oh! Oh! Okay. You could then safely assume that gone means left. After all, after someone left, they were gone. That's a stretch. Okay. But in this case, they clearly refer to their directional homonyms. Then truth equals right and gone equals left. Junpei looked at the bracelet again. The left and right of the bracelet. These two things sticking out. So if I pressed them in the following order. Truth had gone. Truth had gone. Truth had gone. Mm. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then... One after another, eight numbers flashed on, then off of the face of Junpei's bracelet. Wait, did it just... Uh... He checked one more time to be sure. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Oh, hey, what are those numbers? Junbei didn't answer. He couldn't answer. He had no idea what they were either. Besides, he was sure he would forget the numbers in the order they came in if he said anything. We might want to write those down because that could possibly be a solution for a different puzzle. Yeah, one, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. But I bet it's the combo. It probably is, but you know. One, four. One, four, what, what is it, three? One, four, three, eight. Mm -hmm. Three, four, two, one. Numbers don't mean anything to me. Uh, 14, <laughs> 38, 
We could try translating that into the uh, the base thing we had earlier. We'll do that a little bit later. See if that comes up with anything. One four three eight three four two one. Muttering the numbers to himself over and over, Junpei headed toward the bedroom. One four three eight. Oh, sorry. One four three eight three four two one. 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 Before long, he found himself in front of the safe again. The lock was the only device he could think of that required a sequence of numbers such as the ones he just discovered. Besides, someone had opened the safe at least once already. Had Clover come to the bedroom to open it? Hmm. Junpei slowly dialed in the numbers that the bracelet had given him. One to the right. Four to the left. And... Bingo. I knew it was for this. A small telltale sound of a lock opening. He grabbed the handle, took a deep breath, and pulled it up. Is this some sort of note? Is that some sort of twisted note? Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Inside was a piece of paper. It was roughly the same size as the one Clover had been holding. Let's see. Junpei picked it up. This is what it said. Act number one. The note the game was played once before. Nine years ago. Fact number two. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. We we kind of yeah, we kind of guessed at that, yeah. Fact number three. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceutical CEO Gentaro Hongo. So that's Ace. Cradle Pharmaceutical's chief of staff, Maggie Sunny Jasaki. We don't know who that is. Cradle Pharmaceuticals R&D Supervisor, Toraki Kubota. Majority Shareholder of Cradle Pharmaceuticals, Kagechika Musashido. We only knew, um, what was Lotus's name? What was Lotus's name? Did we learn Lotus's name? We did. We learned what her last name was. When? Um, when Seven was talking about going in to the, um... Following up on the missing kids 15 years ago, uh, he mentioned a name that happened to be one of um, Lotus's mm. children, and that's when she gave her last name. I interesting. I don't remember that. I don't remember what it was at all. But I remember. I don't think it's happened. one of these. I don't think it's one. Of, I think it might have been. I don't remember. I'll look at. I'll look it up when we're done here. If it's one. If it's one that we've that we're but. This is Ace. Yeah, seems like it. I must punish them for the innocent lives they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls might be saved. I now state the truth. Zero. Junpei left the closet. I'm out of the closet now. There were five people waiting for him in the bedroom. Ace, Lotus, Santa, Seven, and June. He looked at each one of them in turn, then slowly paced his hands on the pockets of his vest. Sorry, but do you think you could all come with me? Uh, come with you, huh? I want all of you to go to the big hospital room. Why? There's something I want to be sure of. What do you want to be sure of? I want to know if the person I suspect is really the culprit. Wait, then you're saying, uh... Yeah, I think I've got it figured out. I know who killed Snake and Clover. The atmosphere in the room changed. Grief was suddenly gone, replaced by a tension like a strap of leather stretched to its limit. Five sets of eyes stared at Junpei. He pretended not to notice. Anyway, if you could all please move to the big hospital room, I'll explain everything as soon as we get there. Then almost as if on cue, the bell began to ring. They all heard it. It was the bell from the clock in the main staircase. The bell rang five times, then seized. It's five o'clock. We've only got an hour left. We don't have a lot of time left. Let's go. 
Slowly, one by one, they followed Junpei out of the bedroom. Actually, before... Okay, now we've moved on. Actually, before we get started, I was hoping you could do something for me. Junpei stopped in front of door three and turned around. Ace, seven, and Lotus, could you please place your palms on the red? Uh. Uh? Why? If we need to get to the shower room, why don't we just... No, we're not going inside. Once you've authenticated, step away from the door. Uh, why? Please, just do it. So what, that's seven, eight, and one, that's sixteen, right? Or perhaps you don't want to know who killed Snake and Clover? Junpei's implication was clear, and Seven understood perfectly. Ugh, fine. What about you, Ace, Lotus? Do uh, very well. Sure, why not? Quickly, they pressed their palms onto the red. Once they had finished, they stepped away from the door as Junpei had instructed. Three asterisks shone from the red's display panel. I have this idea. I don't think this device responds to a hand placed on it. It instead reacts to a bracelet being brought close. You don't actually need a hand. Junpei broached it and held his bracelet over the scanner. He made quite sure he didn't place his palm on it, instead only brought his bracelet near it. The fourth asterisk appeared. I knew it. Just as Junpei had expected. It was possible to authenticate without placing one's palm on the red, so long as the bracelet was brought near it. Junpei pulled the lever down. Wait. Seven, eight, one, that's sixteen. Plus Junpei is five, that's twenty-one. Cool. Door three opened like a hungry mouth. Nine long seconds passed. And the door shut, unfed. Junpei walked slowly back to the others who were waiting some distance from the door, talking to one another. Santa and Juna joined them as well. Hmm. Huh? Looked as though they hadn't found a chance to break into the conversation yet. As Junpei approached, they turned to look at him, curiosity playing on their faces. Before long, the other three did as well. What was that about? How should I know? Clearly, they were all expecting some answers. Thanks, I appreciate your cooperation. Clearly, they'd hoped for something more forthcoming. He continued. By the way, Ace, would you mind if I asked you something? Uh, what is it? Do you know who I am? Oh, uh, what? What kind of question is, uh... Just answer it, please. Who am I? You're, uh, Junpei, of course. Who else would you be? Unfortunately, that's the wrong answer. Actually, I'm Santa. Oh, shit, what? Ace's voice was full of surprise, but it was also tinged with confusion and fear. Everyone else looked nearly as surprised. Oh, <gasps> right, because this is an explanation for why the CEO wouldn't recognize the people he's on here with. Mm -hmm. Santa looked especially shocked to discover he was actually someone else. If he spoke, however, the trap would be exposed. Junpei quickly continued. The clothes I'm wearing I borrowed from Junpei, and the clothes he's wearing are mine. We had a little swap. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's impossible. So, you're saying I'm not Santa? Of course you aren't. Why? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? If you were Santa, the door number three wouldn't have opened for us just now. One plus seven plus eight plus three equals nineteen, after all. One plus nine would be ten. The digital root would be one. The four of us just opened door number three. You can't possibly be Santa. Your bracelet number isn't three. It's five, right? Uh. Uh. Only then, when it was too late, did Ace realize his mistake. He set his jaw and glared at Junpei. You're exactly right. My bracelet number is five. As he spoke, Junpei lifted his wrist up to show everyone the bright red five on his wrist. Sorry, Ace, I tricked you. Of course I'm not really Santa, I'm Junpei. Who could possibly think I was? It's obvious I'm not. To think I was. Ridiculous. But I guess you couldn't see just how obvious it was. Duh. I asked you before, didn't I? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? And you answered, If you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. Most people wouldn't say something like that. The first thing that would come to anyone else's mind wouldn't be the bracelet number. There'd only be one thing they say. One sentence. You don't have his face. Nah. Ace, you have prosopagnosia, am I right? Junpei's voice was quiet and calm. He knew the truth, and so did Ace. Prosopagnosia? The others looked confused. 
What's that? No clue. Prosopinosia is... He heard Lotus begin to explain it to them. Ace glanced at them, then turned back toward Junpei and sighed. Oh, very well, I confess. I have prosopinosia. I cannot differentiate human faces. Is that what this was about? Want to mock me for my disorder, huh? No, no, not at all. I'm not making fun of you at all. In fact, I feel kind of bad for you. That's... All right, not better, but all right. No, the reason I brought this up is that there's an excellent chance the person who killed Snake has prosopagnosia. Ace's face tightened, his eyes narrowed. And what do you mean by that? Junpei leaned casually across the iron piping of one of the beds. I'll just come right out with it. I think it was you, Ace. You killed him. Junpei was suddenly very aware of five pairs of eyes on him. He had their full, undivided attention now. The room had grown very, very quiet. Junpei took a deep breath. That's ridiculous. What possible evidence do you... I have three pieces of evidence. The first, think back to a few hours ago. You made us argue over the three doors here in the big hospital room. There was no way all seven people could go through them. Lotus suggested that we sacrifice one of us. Huh. Lotus looked away awkwardly. Junpei glanced at her and continued. Then you, Ace, said, I'll oh. stay here. Wow. That's like just what my voice sounds like. Why would you say something like that? It's pretty simple, really. You didn't want us to see the dead body in the shower room. Nah. You see, if Ace stayed behind, there were only two doors the rest of us could go through. Doors seven and eight. There was no way we could get through door three, the shower room. You knew that, didn't you, Ace? That's why you volunteered to stay behind. Come on now, I think that's going a bit far. I understand if you're jealous of my bravery, but uh, please don't devalue my actions, man. I wanted to save the rest of you. Surely you can understand my altruism. Altruism, huh? Junpei stared off into the darkness that something very interesting and lazily began to dig a persistent bit of wax out of his ear. You already knew, didn't you? You knew that whichever doors we took, eventually we'd end up back in the big hospital room. What on earth are you saying? Of course I didn't know that. How could I have? Really? Yes! Yes! Pleading was not something they'd heard from Ace before. Huh. Junpei pulled the piece of wax from his ear, glanced at it, and flicked it off into the darkness. Oh well, that's cool. I've still got two more pieces of evidence that say you're the killer. The second is that, as I said earlier, you have prosopagnosia. Then you mean to imply a person who can't distinguish human faces must be a bad person? Junpei, they call that prejudice, you know? No, I'm not that stupid. Then why? Well, before I explain, I suppose there's something I should tell you. The corpse in the shower room. It's not snakes. What? What? Ace's face went pale. The others looked confused as well. The body wasn't snakes. I didn't put it together right away, but there was something Clover told me. She said that Snake's left arm was prosthetic. He'd lost his real arm in an accident. But the body we saw in the shower room, let's call him Guy X. <laughs> Some unknown person X. Yeah, I follow you. <laughs> Guy X's left arm was definitely flesh and blood. In other words, Guy X couldn't possibly have been Snake. Oh God, no, that's impossible. Ace had started muttering deliriously to himself, shaking his head back and forth. Junpei was long past caring. Let's say hypothetically that the killer didn't have prosopagnosia. If that were the case, he would immediately realize that Guy X wasn't Snake. Even if the clothes were the same as snakes, their faces would be completely different. It would have been obvious that they were different people. And yet they still killed him. Why? Why would they kill a stranger who'd only just shown up? Uh. On the other hand, if the killer did have prosopagnosia, it makes sense. They thought Guy X was Snake and killed him. Wait, 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 wait. Just a moment. Let's say you're right. I mistook Guy X for Snake. Even if I did, I'd have no motive to kill him. Why would I want to kill Snake? I can think of at least two motives. One, Snake knew about your past. If he ever revealed what he knew, that would have been really bad for you. You really didn't want that to happen. So, to make sure Snake's mouth stayed shut, you killed him. Uh... Two, Snake had a grudge against you. You knew that, or at least you could have easily assumed he did. Even without exposing your identity, he was a threat to you. You never knew when you might be attacked. You couldn't ever let your guard down. Every moment was a moment he might try something. 
You didn't want that kind of danger hanging over you, so you... Hey, hold on a minute. For the first time since the beginning of Junpei's explanation, someone besides Ace spoke. What's the past that Ace wouldn't want us to know? Why did Snake have a grudge against him? Look at this. He handed Santa a small piece of paper. What's this piece of paper? Santa squinted at the paper and began to read. The nonary game was played once before, nine years ago. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceuticals CEO, Gentaro Hongo. What is this? Slowly, Santa looked up from the paper. His eyes met Junpei's. It's the message from Zero. It was in the safe in the first class cabin. And then suddenly... Give me a break! His face was red and shaking, and his voice was full of fury tinged with desperation. That paper's a lie! Someone is trying to frame me! Me. You said me, right? Junpei's eyes narrowed and the trap began to close. Huh! Ace inhaled sharply. His eyes flicked off Junpei to something, anything else. Wouldn't that mean you're admitting you're Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals? Or am I mistaken? It was as though a switch had been flipped. The color drained from Ace's face, and as he realized what he'd done, his eyes went wide. Very well, I admit that much. I'm certainly the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals, Gintaro Hongo. So what if I am? I don't know anything about this non ring game that supposedly took place nine years ago. The thing on that scrap of paper is bullshit. Someone's trying to set me up, you see. First of all, first of all... He stammered as he tried to desperately work himself to a more tenable position. Junpei, you're claiming I did all this by myself. Think that over, all right? How could I have killed Snake all by myself? Not Snake. It was Guy X. I don't care who it was. You said the killer put this other man into door three, right? Yeah, maybe. Then I couldn't have possibly done that alone. I couldn't have opened door three with only myself and Guy X. No, you could have. <gasps> and this is... We figured this all out after our first ending. Damn. <laughs> we did really well. We did really well. <laughs> That's the fucking Umaneko effect, baby. <laughs> I'm still impressed by the fact that you called that he was the guy who ran the pharmaceutical thing. <laughs> what? Ace's face was tight and his teeth were clenched. Junpei fixed him with a level stare. The trap was about to close. Actually, Ace, when you were unconscious, I took something from you. Remember when you were injected with that anesthetic and fell asleep in the big hospital room? Yeah, back then I took this. Junpei put his hand into his pocket. No, 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 you couldn't have! Ace's right hand moved. Junpei smiled. I got you, Ace. Your right hand there tells me all I needed to know. You want to tell me what you were so worried about? What's in your pocket? Ugh. It's the number nine bracelet, isn't it? Ugh. Ace, Guy X, and the ninth man's bracelet. That was all you needed to open door three. One plus two plus nine equals twelve. One plus two equals three. That's how you killed Guy X all by yourself, Ace. <laughs> Oh, man! Oh, yeah! Give me that shit! All you needed was the number nine bracelet in your chest pocket. Ace lowered his hand from where it had stopped, halfway to his pocket. <sighs> he looked down at the floor, his face hidden from Junpei. All he could see was the corner of Ace's mouth twitching like a dying fish. If you want to play innocent, that's fine by me. Go ahead, tell me I don't have the bracelet if that's what you want to do. But if you could take off your coat and hand it to me, I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll have to take it from you by force, right, Seven? Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. Seven cracked his knuckles with a sound like gunfire. <laughs> Ace roared with laughter. He threw his arms wide and his head back and laughed, filling the room with a sound that scarcely belonged there. <laughs> And then it stopped. Ugh. His arms came down and his head dropped to look straight ahead at Junpei. <laughs> his face was flat and cold, devoid of any emotion. Well done, Junpei. As you so correctly deduced, I have the number nine bracelet. I achieved it while we were searching for the missing hardware for the red. At the room I was supposed to search and headed to the first-class cabin on B-deck. His voice showed no emotion, no sense of remorse or interest. It was almost bored as though he were reciting an especially dull corporate letter. My purpose was to obtain the number nine bracelet. Nine is a potent ally in the nonary game, after all. 
Adding nine to any set of numbers won't alter the digital root. One plus nine plus 10 is one plus zero equals one. Two plus nine equals 11. One plus one equals two. We're gonna Are prove this for every single fucking number because I don't know. <laughs> we can only do proof by exhaustion apparently. <laughs> As you can see, nine is a very useful number here. With it, one can go anywhere with anyone. It is, I suppose you could say, a game changer. So I made for the first class cabin to obtain it in mere moments. I successfully acquired the number nine bracelet. Also an unexpected bonus. The knife, the ninth man. The right, 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 right. He had a knife. That's where I, for I completely forgot the ninth man had, had a knife because we never replayed the first scene. Yeah. So that's where the knife came. Okay, so that, that ties up that list. Okay, okay. I quickly pocketed both of them and left. Made my way back to where I was expected to be. It's when I ran into a snake. Well, this guy acts actually. I spotted him ahead of me. I was heading for the large hospital room and hadn't noticed me. The man wearing snake's clothes arrived at door number three. When he stopped, I walked up behind him and called out. Snake! He turned around. He said nothing. His mouth simply hung half open. He seemed dazed somehow, almost like a man half asleep. Perhaps he'd been drugged? It wasn't important. I tend to gloss over little things like that. I'm certain that man was Snake. I knew Snake had taken part in the non game nine years ago. Being blind made sense he didn't recognize me immediately upon our first meeting. But why then hadn't Snake said anything to me later? Surely he hadn't forgotten what had happened to him in the non game. But not once did he attempt to click through too early. But not once did he attempt to confront me. Did his lack of sight prevent him from fully recognizing who I was? Perhaps Snake had conspired with Zero to deceive me. Regardless, he was a threat. It was better to deal with him sooner rather than later. I had to get rid of him before he took action. With quick thinking, my plan went into motion immediately. Hold the number nine bracelet over the red. Wave my own bracelet in front of the red. Then grab Snake's arm and shoved it against his hand against the scanner panel. The door opened. I threw the man through it. Nine seconds later, the door shut. 81 seconds passed. The man inside the door passed away. That's interesting then, because this means whoever this other guy was had also swallowed a bomb. Because he was being... Because he felt ill? No, because oh, he, exploded. he exploded. Oh, because he exploded. because he exploded. All right. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> and that's interesting, because th on this theory, Cause that it's means definitely... It's definitely Snake is Snake and this other guy is some other guy theory. This other guy wasn't Snake all along. Right. So. Unless that other guy was some other guy all along and Clover is also face blind. I, I don't think we have reason to. All right. Well. Suspect that. Regardless. After that, I returned to my post as though nothing had happened. Conducting my own search, I returned to the large hospital room where the 1 a.m. bell rang. His eyes were cold and his cheeks were hollow and pallid. When he spoke, only his lips and tongue moved. The rest of his face was eerily still. Jim Bank glared at Ace. He took a deep breath and thought about the next question he had to ask. He didn't want to. He knew what the answer would be. He just didn't want to hear it. Jim Bank swallowed and then spoke. Ace, did you kill Clover? Yeah. Why? Why did you kill her? She was Snake's sister. It's possible he had told her something dangerous. Additionally, she had gone through door number one. Seemed likely she might have found it. Found what? Why don't you go through door number one yourself? Perhaps it's hidden somewhere. Go through door number one. We've been through door number one. What was behind door number one? The, the I don't axe. Remember. The zero bracelet. Mm. The zero bracelet. The zero bracelet. Because finding the zero bracelet might would help you put that together, I think. Mm hmm. Seven and Lotus interrupted. Yeah, but Lotus and I went through door one, too. We didn't see anything suspicious. Uh, I thought as much after I heard your report of the central stairs. Now the two of you could find it. Huh? Huh? Perhaps Clover was different. Perhaps she had found it. I was therefore desperate to find her. Found what? Are we are we barking up the wrong tree with the zero bracelet and the one door yeah, having something what to do was with in the captain there? room? Because what, what else was Is in there? Is it even that room? Because behind the door was the captain's wheel puzzle and then the captain's quarters puzzle. Uh, and we got a lot of notes and stuff in there, like the itinerary for the, sh the ship, right? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, 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 oh. When we were in there, Ace kept interrupting us, and he wanted to know what was in our pocket. And it was just the notes because we had changed the numbers. But that wasn't what he was looking for. He thought we found something in that room. Uh, he expects something to be hidden in one of those rooms. In the captain's quarters. Potentially that room, potentially in the area, but he, there's something is hidden there. Yeah, okay. We didn't find it. We didn't find it. Interesting. Therefore, desperate to find her, as I did in the first class cabin. He spoke very calmly. Hold on. Yeah, okay. Sorry, he said first class cabin after one door, and I had to go back and make sure that we hadn't confused the two. Did you see it? See what? Don't act if you don't understand. You were in the captain's quarters, weren't you? Uh Huh? What are you talking about? Ah, very well. By the way, what are you doing here, Clover? What? Nothing. There's blood on your shoes. It looks fresh. Uh. Did you go take a look at the ninth man's corpse? So something that would lead her to go look at the ninth man's corpse. Or is it just a separate thing? Because that'd be another thing he'd be suspicious of. True. I see. Your silence suggests that you noticed. You saw something, didn't you? You saw that his bracelet was gone. Ah, okay. It was the bracelet. Well, th- th- that's not the same as the thing behind the one door, though. Okay, yeah. Right, because this is this is talking about the ninth man's bracelet. Oh, he's talking about the ninth man. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Separately, I see. Yeah. after asking, did you see it? And oh, my she bad. I'm, I'm still conflating things. You're correct, you're correct. No. Clover ran. She made for the exit, but Ace stood in her way. You aren't going anywhere. He caught her by the collar as she passed and threw her onto the floor hard. Ah. You're staying here. No. She leapt back up and darted past him into the hallway. Ace followed at a run. <sighs> Don't you run, little girl. He was faster. <sighs> and that was how I killed Clover. <laughs> His face hadn't changed. If he felt guilt or remorse or anything one might feel after taking the life of another human being, it did not show. You son of a bitch. Seven's whole body trembled with rage and his voice rumbled with hate. Uh, Ha. Ha. Santa's eyes were bloodthirsty and Lotus's and June's faces were distorted by anger and hatred. (laughs) Ace looked at them and smiled. It was a cold, cruel thing with no humor in it. He shook his head and sighed. I admit it, I lost. I lost completely and utterly. But don't misunderstand, Junpei. I didn't lose to you. I lost to zero. Not to you. Hmm. (laughs) I'm rather disgusted with myself for falling to such a simple trap. I look the fool right now, don't I? And it was a trap, make no mistake. I was trapped and manipulated by zero. Hmm. The man I killed in the shower room. If he wasn't Snake, then I have no idea who he was. But he was wearing Snake's clothes. And that was no coincidence. He'd also been injected with something that reduced his cognition and prevented him from identifying himself or resisting me. And we can't forget the components that were removed from the red before we arrived. I have no doubt that Zero planned all this. Zero made sure I would kill that man. Hmm. It follows, of course, that Zero knew everything I would do. That I would try to take the number nine bracelet. That I would try to kill Snake. Everything. Hmm. Suddenly, Junpei remembered the paper he'd found in the safe. Remember the last word Zero had written on it. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls may be saved and they state the truth. Zero, that's me. And he remembered other words, words he had heard from Clover. I think Zero is one of us. One by one, Junpei looked at the five people standing in front of him. Ace. Santa. June. Seven. Lotus. Zero is one of us. No, wait. There's one more person. Snake, the man who died in the shower room, isn't Snake. That means he's almost certainly still alive. 
Maybe Snake is Zero. Maybe he made Guy X wear his clothes so that we'd all think he was dead. Where's Snake now? What if he's off somewhere laughing at us? If he is Zero, he must have been lying to us about everything else. Is he watching us? Well, uh, I believe I've finished with my confession. Why don't we get moving? He sounded as if he just finished doing nothing more exciting than describing the weather. For Santa, it was the last straw. What the hell is this shit? You aren't going anywhere, you son of a bitch. You're we're gonna leave your ass here to rot. Why? Because I killed Clover? That's ridiculous. Why are you so upset that I killed the little bitch? He was nothing to you, a stranger. You had met only a few hours ago. Am I wrong? You bastard. Seven roared and lifted a fist that would likely have shattered Ace's jaw. But someone else was faster. It was Lotus. She stepped toward Ace, raised a fist of her own, and drove it straight into his nose. <laughs> oh. Blindsiding me with a punch, huh? You got some fire, don't you? I confess I'd rather like a tough woman. <sighs> he sniffed and wiped a small trickle of blood from his nose with a raised eyebrow. Well, maybe you'd like another one, then. Uh, before that, let me give you one of my own. What? Lotus is scarcely time to blink. Ace had snaked his arms around her and pulled Lotus's back up against him. In the same motion, he reached into his coat pocket. It was a gun. How did he get the gun? We separated to look for Clover. Mmm, you're right. It was a gun. The revolver. Almost lazily, he tilted it to point at Lotus's head. Or he just grabbed it on the way out of the room. If any of you so much as blink, I will not hesitate to pull this trigger. I already killed two. No, what, three people? I don't think I'm not ready to make it four. Two, no, th three? I wonder oh. if that's him tacitly admitting to killing the ninth man. Yeah. Because remember, that was one of the things I said about the ninth man. Said, no, that man, he... <laughs> yeah, right. And then and I, we, we thought maybe it was Ace trying to test how the doors worked. Yeah. I don't think I'm ready to make it four. Three people, what do you mean? Oh, very well. Let me take this opportunity to illuminate you. The person who killed the ninth man was me. Although yep, I supposed to be... you called that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's supposed to be more accurate. I encouraged him to get himself killed. Oh, we are examining the main staircase. He came to me and told me his name. I recognized it at once. So I gave him a little... So I bet the ninth man was one of the people on the, the list there. Yeah, like the majority shareholder guy or something. So I gave him a little push. Just a little white lie. Seems the setting for the dead were altered. It only requires a single person to deactivate the detonator in the bracelet. Ah, and he could get away with that because the ninth man would believe as the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals he would know what's up. Yeah. Investigate what's beyond door five. We'll meet again later. And, uh, with that... Okay. Have a good one, guys. I'm going off ahead now. Well, then. Shit. Shit, why isn't it stopping? God damn it! You... You lied! Open the door, please! I'm begging you! Help me, please! Get me out of here! Get me out of here! Oh my god, oh my god, there's no time left. Listen, I was lying to you. He lied to me. He put me in here. It was him. He killed me. It was him. Ah. I got that. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking oh, man. We were on skills. fire this game. <laughs> I had four reasons for killing him. One. As if before the notary game, the number nine bracelet is of the utmost importance. Allow him to keep such a useful tool. He or it would have become a threat to me. Such so a decided that he should be eliminated early on. Two. One of the number nine bracelet. If I could manage to obtain it, I'd be able to manipulate the game as I saw fit. Be unable to acquire the bracelet unless its owner was dead. Second reason. Three. Even setting aside his number, you would have been nothing but trouble for me. So where my past, he knew what happened to you nine years ago. Important that I eliminate him before he was able to disseminate this information. And four. Lastly, I wish to conduct a simple test. A test to see if this notary game was serious or a poor attempt at a joke. I need to be quite sure. As such, I encouraged him to act against the rules. I might observe the outcome. Junpei glared at him. I don't get your third motive. What the hell happened nine years ago? Didn't I say? The nonary game was played. I played it and it out. I conducted its execution. Why? What on earth was it supposed to do? I don't really think I've had any obligation to tell you that. Ace smirked. He was trying to provoke them and it was working. Although Ace had paid very little attention to Lotus after catching her, the gun had never wavered from her temple. 
She looked quite pale, and when she spoke, her voice shook. Hey, what's with this gun? Where did he get this? Why don't you tell us, Anna? Santa ground his teeth and glared at Ace. On the other side of door six, we found the gun in the coffin in the cargo room, right? The bastard must have grabbed it when we weren't looking. Indeed I did. That was a pretty serious mistake, you know. Just saying you intended to leave it behind. Ace laughed a short derisive snort and gave Junpei a sicking, sickingly pitying look. Ha! <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> a little much time left. I'll be off then. Where are you going? Do I really need to explain? I assumed it would be obvious by now. I have the number nine bracelet, and now I have Lotus. Wasn't there a door with a nine on it in the room that looked like a church? That's where you're going, isn't it? And how do you know that? Santa told me about it while we were looking for Clover. I see. Well, you are correct. That is my destination, but now I must say goodbye to you all. Oh, and please don't forget my warning. Move and I'll pull the trigger. I don't need her alive to open the door, you know. As he spoke, Ace began backing toward the door, practically dragging Lotus behind him. Shit. He's, he's getting away. But we can't risk I'm it. taking both the characters' SK voices out of here. <laughs> Junpei Santa... Oh wait, no, Jun's still here. You're fine. Junpei Santa, Jun, and Seven stood frozen. Ace had the face of a man gone mad. They had no doubt he would pull the trigger. Ace had reached the exit. Now, uh, Lotus, would you open the door for me, please, if you would? Huh. He forced Lotus to open it, then turned and addressed them once more. Goodbye, y'all. Then he stepped through the door. It fell shut. In the blink of an eye, they were gone. Damn it. As soon as Ace and Lotus were gone, Junpei and the others leapt for the door in pursuit of Ace. But as Junpei laid his hand on the doorknob, ah. there was a noise behind him. He looked over his shoulder. Jun was kneeling on the floor, breathing heavily. Hey, Jun, what happened? Are you all right? I don't think we ever had a good theory on what's, why, like, we assumed it might be to do with the bombs. She mentioned medication at one point, that she needs mm -hmm. her medication, so this might be a June specific thing. Maybe. Santa ran to Jun and wrapped his arm around her before she could collapse all the way. Jesus, you're burning up. Your fever's back. Are you okay? Jun's fever had returned, and again for no apparent reason. Her eyes were watery and her eyelids drooped. Her breath came in dry, shallow gasps. I'm okay, really, I'm fine. You should be worrying about Lotus. She was breathing hard now and she could barely summon the strength to talk. But... Junpei was torn. He couldn't leave June alone in the state she was in. But every moment they waited, Ace was farther away, Lotus's life in his hands. What was Junpei supposed to do? June's eyes drifted to Junpei's. She managed to muster a weak smile. Jumpy, don't worry about me. I just need a little rest. I'll be fine. Don't you remember? I just needed to rest a little bit last time. So please, go save Lotus. Uh, think about what Ace has already done, Junpei. When he's got what he needs from Lotus, you really think he's just going to let her walk away? Damn it. You guys go on ahead. As soon as June starts feeling better, we'll follow you. Go. Junpei <sighs> looked at June. Huh. She nodded at once. She couldn't manage much more, but it was all the confirmation Junpei needed. His resolve was set. Although, if, if Santa is still as malicious, we still don't know what Santa's motives were in the ending where he winds up um, trying to get out with those folks, right? Yeah. So this is leaving him and June in access to the Zero Bracelet. Mm-hmm. Because th did they leave the Zero Bracelet on, on Clover, or does Jun Junpei have it now? Wait, 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 wait. Did we establish that Clover had the zero bracelet? Oh, we don't. Did Junpei we have it? it? We haven't. S okay, so maybe I don't need to worry about this. I just want It's worth worrying about. It's quite yeah. possible that the zero bracelet is in Santa's possession. And it's still extant at this moment. Use yeah. that to escape with June and leave us trapped? He didn't go through the one door, so he wouldn't have been able to get it. But, hmm. But it was all the confirmation Junpei needed. His resolve was set. All right, come on, Seven, we're going after Ace. Hell yeah. Santa, you take good care of June, I'm trusting you. Got it. Santa nodded. Junpei turned before he had a chance to change his mind and started running toward the door. He could hear Seven's heavy footsteps behind him. Let's go. Junpei and Seven exploded into the hallway, their feet pounding on the metal floor as they ran.
They're going to get bottlenecked at the elevator, though. Chupay and Seven had finally arrived at the church, exhausted and out of breath. As so a long struggle to catch their breath, their eyes frantically scanned the room. Where are they? I don't see them. Do you think they already went through? He reached up to wipe a palmful of sweat from his brow. Maybe. Even as he spoke, Junpei was already on his way to the, large of the num larger of the number nine doors. Let's check the rat. The display panel read vacant. He spun around and headed toward the smaller door. This red would tell him a face and lotus and move to another room. Engaged. It's occupied. It's interesting that Ace, given the opportunity, goes for the small one. Santa, given the opportunity, goes for the larger one. Hmm. Okay. That means Ace and Lotus went through here. Yeah, it seems like it. Junpei and Seven stepped away from the door. They retreated to the center of the room and began to talk. What do we do now? Yeah, what should we do? Well, the big door is still vacant, but, uh, the two of us can't do anything with it. Yeah, not even counting how our digital route isn't nine. Just then, as they were pondering what to do next, there was a noise. A noise like someone hitting a thick wooden panel. What's that sound? Junpei looked up, surprised. Seven followed suit, his eyes jumping around the room, looking for the source of the sound. It's coming from over there. It wasn't long before they found the altar. Or more precisely, what was on it. The coffin? Yeah. Let's open it. How? By force. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, you never know till you try, right? The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer a thousand failures. <laughs> uh, who said that? I forget. Uh, anyway, we gotta try. Junpei and Seven leapt at the coffin. They grabbed a hold of what purchase they could find and pulled. Ah. Uh, uh, damn it. See, didn't I tell you? If you could just pull it open, why would it have something like that? Seven pointed at a keypad on the side of the coffin. Right, so unless I put in the right passcode, it's not going to open. The noise hadn't stopped. In fact, as it continued, it had only gotten louder and more forceful. What were they supposed to do, Junpei wondered. Was there some sort of clue somewhere? This cutscene again. Are we going to get another to be continued? They stood there for a few moments, staring at the coffin, and then Seven spoke. Hey, Junpei. I remember you mumbling about some weird numbers over by the bathroom in the first class cabin. You got those numbers by solving the secret message Clover was holding, right? Truth had gone, or something like that. Yeah, that's right. What about it? Well, maybe that number's the passcode for this thing, too. Come on, that's impossible. Those numbers were the code to unlock that safe. Yeah, but the person who set up that safe in this coffin is the same person, right? Zero set up both of these. Yeah, probably. Well, then they might have set the same passcode for both of them. That's ridiculous. Why don't you just try it? I mean, it's not like you'll make things any worse. It'd just be a waste of time. There's no way they're the same number. How do you know that? You never know until you try. The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer 1,000 failures. <laughs> Who said that? You. Ugh, fine. He knelt down in front of the keypad and looked at it. Perhaps because he'd repeated them so many times before, the numbers came easily to Junpei's mind. 1438-3421. I should have translated those during the break and see if they were had anything to do with the uh, the base system we were given earlier, but regardless. I don't think they could. Because 14 would be... what? 38 wouldn't be anything. Oh, you're right. 
because at most 26 letters. You're absolutely right. That wouldn't be anything. I have no idea what they are then. Quickly, you type them in. 1438-3421. You checked that he'd entered the right numbers, took a deep breath, and pressed the E button. Could also be notes of a scale. Hmm? That has eight. Only took a moment. Hell yeah. What? You gotta be kidding me. It was a click. And with a heavy clunk, the lid of the coffin slid off onto the floor. Someone sat up from inside. What the fuck is happening? Snake? You why? Oh, those voices. Junpei and Seven, unless I'm mistaken. Where are the others? Are they elsewhere? Of course, there was no reason Snake would have known anything about where anyone else would be. <sighs> Junpei and Seven looked at one another. There was a great deal he needed to know, but... This is interesting because I had figured when we figured snakes in the coffin and um, figured, oh, snake, uh, there's some there's some double of snake. I'd figured that meant snake was zero and was hiding in this coffin deliberately. And this doesn't appear to be playing out that way. It seems snake is also not. Yeah. 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 They had to tell him something, however, so they began to talk. Snake explained to them how he came to be locked in the coffin. Apparently he'd been hit with some sort of knockout gas, and Junpei 7 explained what had happened to the rest of them. Oh, I see. I believe I get the gist of everything. Have I been sufficiently caught up? No, there was one thing they kept from him. There was one thing, however, that neither Seven nor Junpei could bring themselves to say. That Ace had killed Clover. They feared that if Snake knew, he might well go insane. Yeah. They decided as much by a look at the moment Snake had climbed out of the coffin. But that still doesn't explain why you were trapped in here. We've still no clue about Zero's true identity, let alone why the hell he's doing all okay, this. Okay, so what has he got on there? That's like the... Is that the Mercury symbol? Right, the female symbol with... I don't know. I'm not too good at these symbols. All right, and what's that on his shoulder? I don't recognize that. Oh. Why did he put Guy X in Snake's clothes? Is all this stuff somehow related to that Nonary game that was played nine years ago? Hmm. Hey, Snake, do you know anything? Jinpei put the question to Snake. His answer was less than illuminating. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? I apologize, but I have no idea what you're saying. It seemed as though Snake was perhaps not being entirely honest, but that knowledge did Jinpei and Seven little good. Oh, come on. Just tell us if you know. I don't know what to tell you. How can I know something I don't? No matter how many times they asked, he insisted that he knew nothing. It was becoming clear that Snake wouldn't give in, and every second they spent asking him was a second wasted. This is bad. We're running out of time. We need to go after Ace. However, they stood in silence, the overpowering atmosphere of the chapel almost stifling. Junpei Seven and Snake simply stood at a loss for what they should do next. What do we do now? He glanced over at Snake's wrist. Sure enough, he could see the two on the bracelet on Snake's wrist. Well, the three of us can't make a digital root of nine. Yeah, we'd just get five. We're stuck here, then. Oh, hey, I just remembered something. Seven began patting his pockets as if we were checking to see if any of them held anything. What? What is it? Uh, I found something earlier. What did you find? This. He finally found the pocket he wanted, and his hand dove into it. Seven pulled out something round and metal. A bracelet. There was no mistaking the number glowing at them from the face like a cartoon eye. So she did have the zero bracelet on her. Okay. Yep. Zero. Zero's bracelet. What did you say? You're saying that seven has the number zero bracelet. Yeah. Where did you get that? Snake's question was innocent enough, but if he learned the truth, if he'd been able to see, would he have noticed Seven look away? Clover gave it to me. She did? Yeah. How did she come by it? Well, she found it, see, on the other side of door one, a deck, in the captain's quarters. She asked me to hold on to it because it was too big and bulky for her to be lugging around. He's lying. Junpei could tell right away that Seven wasn't telling the truth. He even told us earlier. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Didn't want to disturb the crime scene, you know? Basic stuff. Well, I did borrow one thing. 
he probably said that so Snake doesn't find out about Clover. Just making sure the audience doesn't factor that into their analysis of events. I appreciate that. All right, Junpei, been nice knowing you. What? Seven plus two plus zero equals nine. Come on, man, I'm just kidding. Still, just in case, I want to make sure the zero bracelet gets picked up by the red. Snake, give me a hand, all right? Without waiting for a response, he started walking toward the door. Junpei and Snake followed him quietly. We're not going to talk about Snake's fucking robes at all? And what that means? Before long, they found themselves in front of the larger of the two doors. Seven and Snake put their palms on the red. Once they'd done that, Seven put the number zero bracelet on the scanner panel as well. A third asterisk appeared on the screen. Seven plus two plus zero equals nine. Now they just needed to pull the lever and the door would open. Huh? Why isn't it opening? Uh, well, the third asterisk lit up, so, uh, it must have registered the zero bracelet. Maybe it isn't actually zero. Huh? What? That bracelet may not actually produce the number zero when scanned. That is what I'm saying. Hmm. Why don't we try a few different combinations? Perhaps we can determine what number that bracelet actually contains. Got it. Fucking weird. Okay. Okay. Uh... Junpei nodded. They decided to use the following combination. Okay, okay, okay. What we did... What did we just do? What was the one we just did? The one we did was the naive assumption that Snake plus Junpei... Or Snake plus 7 plus the bracelet would be... 7 plus 2 plus 0 would be 9. Okay. So we need to add up to 9, right? So Junpei plus 7... Snake plus Junpei plus the bracelet would mean 5 plus se 7. 5 plus 2 plus what? 3? I don't know how to math right now. 5 Wait. plus 2 plus 2. Yeah. That would mean it's a second snake bracelet. Okay. Junpei plus 7 plus the bracelet would be 5 plus 7, which is 12. The bracelet would have to be 6. Okay. It have to be another June bracelet. Snake plus Junpei plus 7 is... Okay, so that's 9 plus 5. Snake plus Junpei plus 7 is the same as Junpei plus 7. No, it's not. What am I doing? Snake plus Junpei is 9 plus 5. 14 plus the bracelet. That would have to be 4. That would have to be another Clover bracelet. Okay. So let's try this one. I guess just go in order, right? Why not? Yeah, I don't see any obvious reason to prefer one over the other. Uh, let's try Snake, me, and the bracelet. Snake plus Junpei equals 2 plus 5 equals 7. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is two. The door didn't open. The mysterious bracelet wasn't two. It didn't open. I guess it's not two. Then... Junpei continued. They decided to use the... F oh, whoa. Well... Junpei, you all right over there? It seems like you're clicking through a bit too mud, mud fast there, huh? Okay. Let's try me, seven, and the bracelet. Five plus seven equals 12, one plus two equals three. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is six. They scanned to their bracelets. Zero is June? So, remember in episode <laughs> one, when I was like, June is zero? Oh, is that what that means? What if that's real? That's clever. It opened. Yes, yeah, so it would seem. Seven clearly hadn't thought their experimentation would produce anything useful and looked rather confused. Snake was as usual, calm and smug. The door slid closed. Junpei's forehead furrowed as he thought. That means the bracelet is actually six. 5 plus 7 plus 6 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. But how is that possible? The display on the bracelet clearly shows a zero. <laughs> oh, it's always the one you don't want it to be. Suddenly, from somewhere far beneath them, they heard a creak and a groan of tearing metal. With it came the sound of water pouring into parts of the ship that had until recently been dry. Oh, man, that's not good. I guess our time is just about up. Huh. At any rate, we know that the door can be opened. Let's go. Snake, are you sure? 
Yeah, you know that only Junpei and I can go through this way. You needn't worry, I have a solution to this problem. My last resort, but now, now's not the time for last resorts, then when? Last resort? Danger. Right? What? Da he's gonna get inspiration. Hmm. Junpei 7 and Snake ran full tilt down a long, straight hallway. What? What? How did Snake get through? What? That can't be the case. Let's click ahead. That, that, that just, it's gotta be an error, right? They were headed for the stern of the ship and had no time for distractions. They ran 7 spoke. You gotta admit, you really surprised me there, kid. I couldn't figure out how the hell you were gonna get out of that one. How come you didn't do that right off the bat? As I told you, it was a last resort. Had I used it at the beginning of the game, I would have come under a great deal of suspicion. Imagine that most people would have taken it to mean that I was zero. Okay, so there's something up, yeah. He gets to open a door for free. Interesting. Once they'd convinced themselves of that, I wasn't optimistic about my chances of making out it here alive, let alone unscathed. But the best to play my cards close to the chest, as it were. And if I were in a situation where there was nothing else I could do, I'd have a little trick up my sleeve. Just take my bracelet off. Oh, that's why. Right, he can just take the bracelet off. Snake's playing a bit. Because it was always on his left wrist! I didn't get we didn't think that far ahead. Yeah. They, they, they just left his arm. Yeah. <laughs> He'd simply removed his bracelet. How? To Junpei, it looked as though Snake had simply crushed the bones of his hand until they were small enough to fit through the wristband. Of course, that would have been practically impossible, so how had he done it? I had, I surprised we never thought that part through. We just kind of accepted that and just like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Oh, right, he could just take it. It's pathetic. My brother's left arm is, uh, it's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. Snake had slid the bracelet off, tossed it into the coffin. I know this is kind of a weird thing to say, but I'm glad that's a fake arm. Don't have to be afraid of the door if you don't got a bracelet. You are correct. He'd walk through the door easily without authenticating. He stepped out into the other side unscathed and began running down the hall alongside Seven and Junpei. Kept running for a while longer and eventually came upon a set of stairs leading downward on the right side of the hallway. They stopped and peered down the staircase. I think these stairs connect down to the bottom deck. Doesn't look like it's underwater. They nodded quickly to one another and jogged down the stairs. It took only a few minutes to make their way to the bottom deck. There was a single hallway in front of them and at the end of which was a single door. Let's go through that door. Junpei threw it open. Inside was a massive iron gate. The plate was affixed to the top of it. A red incinerator. Incinerator? No, oh, I didn't play through Gen 7. Oh my, that doesn't sound very pleasant. Do you see a lever near the gate, perhaps? Yeah, right over here. How did you know that? Well, I'd be happy to regale you with the story. I imagine it should only take half a day or so. Hmm. Ah. Junpei grumbled, gave Snake a dirty look, and jogged over to the lever. If you pull it, the door ought to open. Got it. He pulled the lever down. With the rumble of an ancient motor, the door opened. There was no need to hold back and no time to hesitate. They pushed their way inside. Standing in front of them were Ace and Lotus. Ace still held the revolver in his hand. So the doors do meet up after. Okay. So they both eventually did the same place. It was still pressed hard against Lotus's temple. A small dark bruise had begun to form near the tip. Duh. Huh? Even from several yards away, Junpei could see that Lotus was shaking. She was terrified. Perhaps more interesting was what Junpei saw behind them. Nine. Another number nine door. What? Why? Why is there another one? The door stopped Junpei in his tracks. It simply shouldn't have been there. His brain finally began to consider why. The whine of a warning clacks and filled the air, drowning out any thought. Oh, there's a final one because four people need to be punished. Four people, presumably, have to add up to nine then. What? No, I was thinking we can have at most five people go through a door. Oh, but right. We got a note saying so four people need to be punished. The five people who are innocent have to also add up to nine. Yeah. 
Maybe. No, mathematically. I mean, I, I mean, maybe if my theory that that's why there's another door. Got it. Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. That seems bad. Automatic incineration will take place in nine minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Oh my, how exciting. You've run quite a show here, Zero. A terrifying smile twisted Ace's face. What's the matter? Too frightened to understand? Here, let me explain. It said the incineration system is about to activate. In nine minutes, this room will be engulfed in flame. Huh? Who are you? Oh, you don't recognize me. I'm hurt. It's me, Snake. Snake? Uh... Oh yeah, you're alive. Afraid your bizarre style had me confused. Quite glad to see you're alive, though. Ace's voice didn't change. Oh, Snake ground his teeth. If you don't mind my asking, how did you Ooh, get... This is Ace. Oh, if you don't mind my asking, how'd you get here? Snake Junpei 7, three of you couldn't have opened a door with a nine, huh? Did you use Glovo's bracelet, perhaps? What? 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 4 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. No, well, your reaction suggests that you did not. Hold on. Why did you think we'd have Clover's bracelet? Junpei felt his chest tighten. Oh, they uh, haven't told you yet, huh? Told me what? Uh, clearly not. Normally I would take some time and enjoy the moment, but I'm afraid my time is at a premium now. To make this quick. Clover. Don't do it, Ace. Keep your goddamn mouth shut. Clover. I said stop it. Don't listen to him, Snake. Jinpei could feel his voice going hoarse, but Snake didn't listen to him. What happened to Clover? Ace looked at him. The corner of his mouth curled into the hook of a cool smile. Clover died. The color left Snake's face. He shook his head weakly. No, that's not true. That's... It's impossible. It's a lie. It has to be a lie. Well, it's quite true. I can assure you of that. I killed him myself, you see. Oh, I thought he would have pulled a final cruelty and made it seem like Junpei had 7 did it. What? Sorry, did I stutter? I killed her. <sighs> Snake's face twisted into a mask of rage, mottled red rising to dot his pale skin. His entire body shook. He looked to Junpei disturbingly like a demon. I would rather she die with less suffering, but uh, a bullet in her brain perhaps would have been an ideal. Unfortunately, that would have made quite a bit of noise. Circumstances being what they were, I was forced to settle for the knife. The one the ninth man had, you remember? I believe I caught her just below the shoulder blade. Or the lucky, in fact, my first thrust went right between her ribs. That flesh was so soft. My knife slid in so easily. There was just no resistance at all. That feeling was... I confess, I feel rather excited. It was a powerful memory. Someday, perhaps, I hope I can feel it again. Incineration will begin in seven minutes. I am going to kill you. Snake's words were a guttural growl, barely audible. Huh? What was that? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Oh, so you're gonna kill me, huh? Please do. Come now. I'm waiting. Don't do it. Don't listen to him, Snake. Stop it, kid. He's screwing with your head. Is there a problem? What are you waiting for, boy? Don't you want me to send you to join your sister? Don't, Snake. Don't do it. But Snake could no longer hear them. Snake could no longer hear anything. Ah! Snake moved like a bolt of lightning. His scream echoed through the incineration chamber full of rage and despair. Snake. Snake. Oh. Uh, oh. Ah! Another scream filled the room. It was Lotus. She ran across the room toward Junpei, her eyes wide with terror. Lotus? Hurry, this way. Snake's ill-fated attack had loosened Ace's grip on her, and she made for a run for it. She reached Seven and Junpei and ducked behind them. Huh. Incineration will begin in five minutes. Give me the woman. He raised the gun. I need her. Without her bracelet, I will be unable to open this door. Quickly now. I don't have time for your shenanigans. In the center of the room, Snake's body lay eerily still. It looked like a human larva prone and vulnerable on the floor. I see. Seem I have no choice. I see if you must die as well. Fortunately, I have five bullets left. One for Junpei. Another for Lotus. And the last three for that lump of idiotic man you call Seven. I'll take Lotus's body with me. 
and leave this room. What if the gun has only one actual bullet loaded and the rest are blanks because Zero planned ahead and wanted one killing to happen or mm. something? I don't know. Yeah, because we don't, we never checked the chamber. We don't know how many bullets, which would be like what? We checked the chamber, but we wouldn't necessarily know if the bullets were blanks. Right. Instead and of, we know one bullet was fired in the other fork route where yep. Santa had it. Incineration will begin in four minutes. It looks as though our time together is at an end. I've enjoyed playing with you. Damn it. Jim Baker see his finger tighten. You can see it begin to squeeze down to the trigger. His body tense preparing for the catastrophic impact of hot lead against human flesh. Goodbye. And then it happened. <laughs> Snake stood up. What? No. No, 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 no. That's, that's impossible. The first time, Ace's composure broke. With obvious effort, Snake lunged forward one step closer to Ace, then another. He looked for all the world like a zombie. Oh, kill you. Oh, kill you. His voice was the mournful wailing of the undead. Stay, stay, stay away from me. Get back. Stop. If you, if you come any closer, I'll, 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 get away from me. Little by little, Ace was retreating. <laughs> Snake didn't stop. He continued to stiff and exorable approach his eyes twin pools of pools of pure fury. L -l Listen to me. I said, don't come any closer. Shit, you bastard. Well, that answers that question. Ace's revolver left five times. Five times the air in the incinerator was split by the crack of a bullet. So that's six. No. Nope. Snake's body twitched as five clouds of blood and torn flesh leapt into the air across his body. A fine pink mist drifted from his body and disappeared. Junpei didn't have time to ponder what that meant before. <sighs> and then his strength was gone. His legs crumbled and his broken, battered body slid to the floor. <coughs> and I sneezed. Incineration will begin in three minutes. <laughs> Finally, yeah. Uh, snake wasn't done. Oh. Kill. You. Even as the pool of blood beneath him grew, he began to move. He half crawled, half slid toward Ace. One bloody arm wrapped itself around Ace's leg. You won't get away. The other gripped his thigh with the strength that should have been long gone. You son of a bitch. You, you're a monster. Get off of me. Let go, damn you. He kicked at Snake with his free leg, driving his foot into Snake's face, his arm, his shoulder. Ah! It made no difference. Snake refused to release him. Once a snake has ensnared its prey, rarely does it release it. This, <laughs> this is it, Ace. We're going to burn to death. Together. What? Incineration will begin in two minutes. Ah, oh, damn it, damn it, damn you! Get off of me! Let me go, you monster! Okay, 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 look, look, think about it this way. My, my company owns a wonderful hospital, has excellent doctors. Y you're not one to do seriously, I'm sure they can fix you up easily. You don't have to die, you can be saved, just let me go! <laughs> Begging for your life. Then Seven and Lotus began to speak. Jinpei could hear tears in their voices and their words were strained. Snake, that's enough. You can stop now. Yes, he's right, Snake. You've done enough. Come on, Snake. Let's go. Let's get out of here. You have to come with us. We have to leave together. Snake turned toward them. He coughed and blood splattered across the floor. And he smiled a sad sort of smile. I apologize, but I'm afraid I can't do that. You'd best forget about me. You need to leave soon. I'm going to take him with me. Shut up! Be quiet! I couldn't. Save Clover. My sister died because of me. Perhaps this will begin to atone for that. Perhaps in the afterlife she can forgive me. Now go! Go! Now! You have to go! Incineration will begin in one minute. God. Damn it! Shit, we're out of time. We gotta go. Huh? Seven ran toward the exit. Lotus followed him, but Junpei, Junpei couldn't move. There were white lines down Snake's cheeks that were his tears had washed the blood away. It was broken body and soul, and Junpei felt as though half his own heart had been torn out. His eyes stung, and he tried desperately to swallow the clear lump in his throat. Junpei, what are you doing? You have to get out of here now! Junpei's chest tightened. 
pulled taut by anger, misery, and a cold feeling of emptiness. Pure emotion surged through his heart alongside the torrent of blood. He could feel it building, a tremendous wave growing taller and taller, and then it broke, crashing down with a thunderous force in onto his shaken, unprepared mind. Snake. Snake! Jinpei's rational mind was gone. He was driven by instinct now, and he launched himself across the floor at Snake and Ace. Or he tried to. Wait, don't be an idiot, Junpei. He felt a hand grab him from behind. It was seven. Before he had time to react, the larger man had pin pinned Junpei's arms to his sides and was hauling him bodily back toward the door. No. No, I have to help Snake. Snake. Snake! Get off of me! Let me go! Incineration will begin in... Ten seconds. Uh, 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 Seven. Six. Damn it, I don't got a choice, kid. Don't blame me for this, all right? Uh, uh, Five. Four. Three. Two. Uh, one. Zero. Gates two and three locked down, beginning incineration. Junpei felt Seven's fist bury itself deep in his stomach, and then his lungs turned to mush. Seven scooped him up in the same motion and leapt through the door. It slammed shut behind them. Junpei struggled to shaky feet. He glanced over to see Lotus only a short distance away. Junpei ran to the door. <sighs> He's... There was a small window cut into it. Inside, he could see Ace and Snake. Shit, 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 damn you all! Why?! Why? Why me? I don't deserve this. Answer me. Answer me, Zero. Why? Why? Zero. Zero. Well... That, that's something, huh? Yeah? He didn't know how much time had passed. He didn't know how long he stood there in front of the incinerator. <sighs> he looked at the side. Lotus's face was ashen, and if not for the hand she put against the wall, Junpei didn't think she could have stood. Seven looked old and tired and used. His eyes stared at the floor, seeing nothing. Junpei said nothing. He simply began to walk toward the open door in the hallway that had come down earlier. Uh, hey, wait, Junpei. Junpei, where are you going? He blinked when their voices broke the silence. He stopped. You stay here. I'll go get Santa and June. You're gonna bring him here. How? Don't worry about that. Just stay here and wait. All right? Huh. He began to walk again. He looked over his shoulder and watched Seven and Lotus grow smaller and smaller. They stared back, not moving. He wasn't sure if they could. He turned around again. He knew where he was going. I saw an elevator on the way here. If I can get it to work, then maybe... Before long, Junpei found himself in front of the elevator. Next to the door was a button with a triangle on it. Please work. He pushed it and the door opened. Yes. But isn't the ship already beginning to flood? Yeah, but it's not actually flooded yet. Junpei was in the large hospital room. June, Santa. He kept calling and walked to the center of the room. But try as he might, he couldn't find them. Oh, damn it. Where did they go? Increasingly frustrated and increasingly worried, Junpei left the large hospital room. He had no choice. He'd have to look for them. Junpei's heart was heavy. Couldn't shake the feeling, but there was a part of him that felt it would be wrong to even if he could. With every step he took, his legs felt more and more like lead. Well, we have the zero bracelet, which isn't a zero bracelet, so... Yeah. Where did they go? I wonder. Sometime later, Junpei found himself at the chapel. Stepped inside expecting to find nothing, but there on the red carpet in the center of the room. June. No code names didn't matter any longer. She was canny. K. 
can he? Junpei cried her name and ran. Like lightning, he ran across the room toward her. Can he? He stumbled to a stop. As he looked down at her body lying so still on the floor, he felt the icy grip of fear upon his heart. She was still so very still. No, no, it can't be. It's impossible. Slowly, Junpei bent down towards her. His hands shook, and he felt very cold and very hot at the same time. He forced himself to look. Her back. Her back was moving. Slowly, it rose and fell. Relief washed over him. Canny. Junpei reached down and gently, very gently, lifted her up. Canny. Canny, are you all right? Chumpy. Her face was pale, and her lips were dry and cracked. Her eyes were blank and cloudy. They stared straight at Junpei, but saw nothing. Trembling, Junpei wrapped his arm around her back. She was cold, very cold. Junpei tried to convince himself that it was only his imagination, but it, she felt as though she were fading away. He could feel his heart pounding frantically in his chest. Oh man, Canny, what the hell happened to you? You, you feel... Junpei, I'm, I'm so sorry. Her voice was faint. I might not make it. No way, no way am I going to let you die. I'm going to save you, I promise. Thank you, Jumpy. Thank you so much for everything. I was really happy to see you again, Jumpy. Really happy. Don't give me that I was, crap. You're going to see me again lots more times. You you just got to hang on, all right, Kenny? Jumpy, did you know you meant a lot to me when we were kids? I've liked you for a very long time, Junpei. A really long time. Junpei's vision had gone blurry. It took him a moment to realize his eyes were filled with tears. He could feel a piercing point of heat deep in his heart like a white-hot flame. He looked down at Akane. There was a crack of static from above his head, and a voice spoke. Zero. You son of a bitch, where are you hiding? Junpei frantically scanned along the ceiling for the source of the voice. Imagine having to put speakers in every single room just in case they, they were in like a hallway or something. I'm right here. I have always been close to you. What the hell are you talking about? No matter. I will tell you again. Game over. This game has ended. No. No, it hasn't. I'm not going to let it end yet. I'm going to get out of here with Canny. You can't. That is impossible. Also, Zero is responding directly to Junpei now. Yeah. Why? Because you chose the wrong path. The wrong path? That is correct. Your path was inevitable, however. Admit defeat. Where there is a shadow, there is a light. Where there is the absence of light, there is no shadow, so it goes. What are you talking about? It matters not. The loser has been decided. Told you, I'm not gonna lose. No, you misunderstand. You have lost. I have lost. What? Junpei didn't have time to ponder what that meant before. He heard the door slam shut behind him. He spun around. There was no one there. Was it Zero? Canny, wait here. I'll be right back, I promise. <laughs> she managed a single nod. Junpei laid her back down gently and leapt for the door. He yanked it open and shot outside. No one. The hall was empty. There was nothing moving anywhere. Damn it. Where are you? It doesn't matter. I need to get Kenny out first. He didn't want to leave Kenny alone any longer than he had to, so Junpei turned around and headed back to the chapel. Kenny? She wasn't there. She wasn't anywhere. She'd been lying there on the floor just moments before, and now she was gone. Oh, God. No. No. Where is she? Kenny. 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 Kenny! <laughs> His cries split the heavens themselves. He screamed until his voice gave out, and then he screamed some more. But there was nothing. No answer. His voice faded away, and all that remained was cold, unfeeling silence. And that was when he noticed it. Huh? A strange smell. One that he'd smelled before. Wait. This is... White smoke. Nine seconds later, Junpei's mind winked out.
Interesting. And we get an actual credits roll on this one. So while the credits roll here, I need to go find out what the hell we learned um, that um, Lotus's name was. Because I have... What was the nine door? In the, was there a nine door in the incinerator room? Yeah. Why was there a nine door in the incinerator room? What do you think that means? My theory was the purpose being only five people can get out. Okay. So now hear me out. Mm-hmm. If the way out is a door with a nine on. The, to- the, the total digital root of all people involved is going to have to add up to nine. Mm-hmm. If you take away a digital root of nine, then the remaining also has to be a digital root of nine. So if we know that the people who need to be punished all add up to nine. And Ace is one of them. Ace is one of them. And is Lotus one of them? That's a good question. What's Because Ace... if Lotus is one of them, we have a method open to us of finding the other two. What's Ace, Lotus, Seven? What do they add up to? But here, here's the thing. If Lotus is one of the people on that list, then she and Ace add to nine, which means the other two necessarily have to add to nine, and then we can start going from there. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we can figure out what the other two have to add up to and, and narrow it down from there. But um, let me see if I can find... What time? Oh. Well, oh, we got like five minutes here. Awesome. I also don't remember the names from the list of names that we saw, so I don't know what I'll be able to find right at this moment. Even no, if that's, we do get to that point. That's fine. I remember the scene, the end, or is it? So now I believe we have to take this information back into the uh, the other route. Yeah. Yo, hey, so we just finished recording that last bit uh, with that last ending and went and had some dinner. We were talking over it, and the two of us have kind of hashed out what I think is like a better idea for what, what putting together what we know. We had a fucking brain blast. Right, so four <clears throat> people have to be punished, right? That uh, And they were Gentaro Hongu, which is Ace, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, and Kage... Kagechika Musashido, right? We had wondered, uh, we know we had gotten Lotus's name at one point. Um, I went and looked it up, the, the, or I went back through our Let's Play and found it. Her name is Kashiwabara. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's her surname. So she is not among these. Now, you had, and we, and we have been led to suspect that June might be zero, mm-hmm. given the bracelet thing, the six equals zero thing, and also her actions at the very end of that route there seem to make make more sense if she is zero right yep okay so the incinerator four people have to die right that's what the note says we currently have three three corpses on the boat right we have the ninth man Mm -hmm. who presumably trusted ace and might have been one of the four people on that one we have the unknown body in the captain's quarters and we have the unknown man x yeah so first first why are we counting corpses Right? Go ahead. So, we have a final nine door, right? Yep. There's one final nine door. Only In the five incinerator. People, yeah, only five people can get through. At most and, five. Yeah, and that's, and that's odd. Because we don't suspect that Zero's intention was to kill at random, or to kill everybody off, or, or to make it a death game. Right. We think kill- there was very specifically the intention that was stated in the note, to punish four people. But, how does that square up? Who goes through? Right. So, because the assumption is that that nine door is the ultimate goal. The nine door in the incinerator room and the last one will be left to die. Now, here's an interesting thing. Um, in order to get through the nine door, the minus ace, right? The remaining folks' bracelets would have to add up to a number that uh, minus ace in the ninth man. Mm-hmm. Right? Their bracelets add up to, uh, what, 10? 10, 10, 10 yeah. total. Um, and we can assume if Zero is indeed, Zero likely knew about Ace's, uh, not Ace's, Snake's ability to remove their arm that had the bracelet on it. It might have accounted for that. If that is true, if, if, if we also take a, a Snake's bracelet out of the equation, the... And assume that the people who survive have to have a bracelet total of nine, mm-hmm. right? That excluding mean, Snake, who gets through anyway. Excluding Snake, who gets through anyway. And that lets us get six people through. 
that lets us get six people through the door, the six people we think are most innocent. That means that the people who remain have to have a bracelet total of seven, or um, digital root. Ninth man plus ace is ten, right? Mm-hmm. Sixteen is the closest one that adds to seven. What does that give us? June. June has been, and who we suspect might be zero from the fucking bracelet message and her actions at the end. Well, it, it, we're, it, June is zero. June has an axe to grind for her treat for going through, probably going through the last one, mm-hmm. right? The last honorary game. And it looks like she's about to die. Sure she does. is sick, feverish, probably doesn't have much longer to live. She never intended to go through that last door. She set this up so that way everyone except the people who needed to be punished would go through the final door. Only, a, only after understanding exactly who needed to be punished and why. Mm-hmm. So, that means everyone else um, all add up uh, what, what um, Snake gets in for free. Santa is three. Clover is four. That's seven. Junpei is five. That's twelve. Seven is seven. That's 19. Lotus is eight. That is 27. And that gets us to that's nine. That's the nine door. So I think that's ultimately what zero slash June's goal is. is. The one thing we haven't been able to figure out yet is what explains Santa's actions. Mm-hmm. We know why Clover decides to kill. That, that we, we've, we've done a good job figuring that out. She explains it very clearly. We don't know why Santa does. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be just that he knows who Ace is and wants to take revenge on her, but, but, or you don't even know that he kills. He takes people specifically through the door, nine door and leave and leaves what seven and Junpei and Clover. Yep. Right. We don't know why that is. I, I don't have a good answer for that. We're not going to have a good answer before we play the final route here. Uh, but we wanted to update you all on our thoughts as we were talking after dinner because it was just, <laughs> just couldn't stop thinking about it. So much stuff came together there. I was so happy with it. I can't believe your random, like, just like, oh, yeah, based on the tropes, it would have to be June. June would have to be zero, right? Yeah, from episode fucking one. <laughs> oh, just but being... the same with your hard call that, oh, yeah, Ace is the guy who runs the pharmaceuticals company, probably. Yeah. Like, I feel I feel like we have, we hit a couple home runs with the mystery this time, and I <laughs> oh, feel good man. about that. I, I, feel, I do feel good about this one. I hope you all are enjoying <clears throat> it, too. Uh, I want to do more stuff like this in the future. Me too. Mysteries are fun. I'm mystery pilled now. <laughs> mystery pilled. Thanks. Um, regardless, we wanted to let you all know all what our thoughts were bef- while they were fresh in our minds and before we got to record the last segment. So there you go. That's an interesting interpretation. Hey, do you guys know about the dual urination effect? Let me give an example. Say you have two people in completely separate places. Let's call them person A and person B. Let's say they both go pee at the same time. They both finish peeing, and then they both flush. Despite having no knowledge of each other, these two people are connected by the fact that they both pee together. When they both flush, their urine goes through the water system. Their pees, which were once separate, eventually all go through the same water system, or back into the ocean. Lots of scientists theorize that this effect is a microcosm of something larger, but they can't agree on what the results mean. That's great, June, but I really need to pee.